Hey, what is up guys, your boy Ed from Lee TV, you already know for today's video, I have a special one coming out. I wanted to do a balanced prediction video. Uh, this is just more or less my personal opinion about what cards should either get hit, come off of the list or whatever. So I'm not gonna do like a top 10 or like 10 cards that I think are gonna come off or 10 cards that should come off. I'm just gonna do some cards that I think should get hit or come out, that's it. It's plain and simple, just my personal opinion. If you do not agree with my personal opinion, that's cool. You're entitled to have your own opinion. But let me know down below in the comments what you think I got wrong or what you think, in your opinion, is wrong compared to my opinion. Because that's interesting, and I always like to hear what other people have to say. But today's video is going to be fun. I have a lot of cards in mind. Let's go ahead and get into it. cards out in the Yu-Gi-Oh meta that should definitely be hit or touched in some kind of way. Uh, I'm not really a big, big believer in twos as in like banning a bunch of cards and putting them or like hitting them into twos. Uh, I feel like I am more of a big believer in playing two ofs just because that's like my preference. But I don't think that a ban list for two ofs is actually too great. Um, there's a lot of cards here. I've been seeing people's <laughs> lists. And like I'm talking about like mini lists where like people talk about cards that um, in the way that they prefer the cards to get hit in their personal opinion or whatever. Um, I think that's cool and all, but there's a couple of cards that I do think that um, should definitely be talked about here in this video. Uh, first card that I've seen because I'm just looking through somebody's list and I'm looking at a card right now and it's uh, the Wind Barrier Statue. I think Wind Barrier Statue is not really a problem. It definitely locks, does lock, lock a lot of people out of playing the game, but <laughs> depending on the deck that they're playing, there's definitely a lot that you can do, and there's definitely many ways to get over it. I mean, like, we still have Imperm, uh, Droplet, Dark Ruler, no more. Um, if that's really a problem to you, then uh, you got to figure out a different way to play against it. Uh, I feel like, as in, in my personal opinion, Flu would probably not be in the top five best decks in the next format, but that's just my personal opinion. I, do, I have seen a lot of people jump off of it now. Um, a lot of, like, the people who are more bandwagoner players, you know, jumping into Kashitera, of course, because Kashitera best deck for the next format. Um, a lot of people who are still very loyal to Tier Element, they're going to be continuing to play Tier Element, but the Flu players, I feel like if you're playing Flu, it's because you like the deck, so more or less the people who are playing the deck right now it's because they know how to play with it and they know how to beat an opponent with full wanderings of course so i feel like if you're going to be playing a lot of those people right now you have to be very smart on how you play against you know <laughs> barrier statue barrier statue is not really much of a problem if you lose you lose and you call it a day you go to the next game and then you continue playing right uh it's a best of three <laughs> but um wind barrier statue is not a problem i don't think it's a card that should get hit at all i just really wanted to talk about that card because i've seen it in a lot of people's uh ban lists and i've seen it banned from a lot of people so just personal opinion i don't think it should get touched now coming up into tier elements territory uh because i mean like if we talked about the flu i think flu is like the biggest problem is definitely the bear uh, the, the wind barrier statue but for floanderies there's so many cards that are really big problems um so haveness is a problem the field spell is a problem kelback is a problem agito is a problem um Merle is also a problem kid Carlos is a problem and those are just like some of the cards that i can think about right now on the, off the top of my head uh i do want to address some of the cards right now uh the mill fives are a really big issue so we're going to start off with those the shisu cards i feel like start talking about Kelback and also talking about agito those are really big issues so um personally speaking i think that konami should hit those cards to one um and i feel like hitting that hitting those specific cards to one wouldn't make it to where like the people have people always have the debate about like one or three right and then like if one would be too sacky like I, I don't think that hitting the hitting one of those two you know would be sackiness i just it, i think they're an issue uh the bouncing of killback i'm pretty sure it's it's the one who does the bouncing right um 
that's a really big issue against any opponent playing against um, a sword soul. Um, okay, they're gonna special and then they're gonna foolish or something, or they're gonna special and then you just bounce their one monster and then they just have the token, or that you bounce the token and they can't synchro anymore, right? Uh, those are issues, and then being able to mill, it's just a really big problem because then you just mill your um, <laughs> your other ones, the ones that return monsters back into the deck, and those are also an issue. So I feel like all four of these Shisu monsters, uh, like I said, now including uh, Keldo and Medora. They're really big issues, and I think all of those should just be one-offs uh, so people could just play them at one if they're going to play them at all. Um, that's just my personal opinion about it, but um, Shisus should definitely all be at one. Continuing off with the rest of the tier limit cards, um, I think that like Havness and Merly are really big problems for the reason being that... So Havness allowing you to play on your opponent's turn is really nasty. Uh, with the next uh, couple of tier limits monsters coming out, they just give you even more free interactions during your opponent's turn. Um, so I wouldn't say ban Havness, but I would say hit Havness to one. Uh, Merly also being a monster that can that, that can be revived by Elf, and then you play on your opponent's turn. So it's it's just you didn't always okay. You didn't just get all of that advantage on your turn by milling and making all these fusion monsters, and maybe you didn't make Predaplant Verde uh, Player Plant Verde. My fault. Uh, the Predaplant's fusion monster, right? Uh, Draco Stapelia, but then you you're gonna you're gonna make it on their turn. So you're gonna Rukalos them. You're gonna go ahead and hit them with Kaleido Heart, and then you're also on top of all of that gonna make a draco civilian which is crazy 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 so i think that it's a little too much and i feel like both of those cards are really good cards that can be played at one uh, and it wouldn't be a thing where like oh they're gonna be played at one they're gonna be sacky no or like you got lucky no i feel like if you play the deck correctly and you do what you need to do so like sprint the merly to the grave or like search off of your field spell and you add the halfness for follow-up or whatever it is that you need to do i think that would be a lot more helpful and that would definitely help the deck out a lot i mean like three shiren is already really good so i mean like having like three shining shiren one merly one have halfness i think it's more than enough uh shout out to peter Assad for the havini he calls it havini i hate that but i think it's funny um but yeah, that's my personal opinion about both Merly and Havness. I think they should both be at one. Uh, talking about the field spell, I don't think the field spell should get hit at all whatsoever. It's a field spell. Uh, I don't really think that there's many field, field spells that should ever get hit. Uh, it's the same personal opinion that I have about like um, a Diagram for True Dracos, right? I think Diagram just gives you a lot of advantage and it helps you out a lot. And um, <laughs> it's a good card. And I think same thing with Planet. I think it's a really good card. And if you play it, you play it. And if, you, if you're gonna play three of, you're gonna play three of, don't play one of. Uh, if the card was to get hit to one, cool, whatever. It gets hit to one and that's fine and dandy, you're chilling. But I think that it's a card that can definitely stay at three. Continuing off to um, another top deck, uh, I wanna talk about Sprite a little bit. I've been seeing in people's, <laughs> I've been seeing in people's like lists and lineups and stuff that like starter is a problem or that like uh, jet is a problem because you can search starter. Uh, those two cards, I am super biased. I don't think they're great. Uh, I don't think that they're cards that demand a ban list or the demand to be hit. Uh, I think that starter and jet are perfectly good cards and I think that they're balanced and they're equal because um, also, also you gotta think about like your opponents are okay so like if, if you give your opponent starters i've had i've had opponents who activated starter in time exactly you it's it's not a reward you have to be smart with starter um jet yeah it helps you out you can also search smashers but smashers is not really a big problem people are only playing one of you you get over that one of you're chilling you continue playing and you're good right for me it's just like i feel like it doesn't demand for for it to get limited or in, in any kind of capacity yeah I, I don't think i don't think it needs to um that's just my biased opinion about it. Like I said, I do play the deck and I love the deck and I just, that's just my personal opinion. If, uh, if you don't agree with it, it's perfectly fine. I think that, you know, there's probably other cards that you, we can disagree on too, right? Continuing on, um, 
Yeah, it, blue is also not a problem. Uh, I think anything that has to do with those sprite cards themselves, sprites are fairly fine. I think that um, I heard <laughs> I heard my friend Cameron talk about how um, he thought that maybe Elf should also lock you into twos. I don't know about all that or sprint as well into twos just like giant uh, i don't know about that um like you're the card or something no of course not um i think that they're fine i think that they're well at three i think most people if you're, if you're elf if you're playing elf and you're playing it at three uh you know i think at three is too many but i mean like most people are playing two elves and it's fine whatever you move on you get a lot of um advantage off of elf yes but i mean like it's not like super busted or something that completely changes the game and it's, it's whatever. Uh, continuing on. Before we continue with today's video, don't forget to go check out my sponsors from Dank Rituals. They have some of the coolest playmats, deck boxes, oversleeves, even dice. They just came out with their brand new travel bag and it is beautiful. I love it and you guys will definitely love it yourselves. Make sure you guys click the link down in the description to go check them out. Okay, before I continue off of TR Laments, I do want to say that I think that Kid Kalos should completely get destroyed. It should it should just get wrecked and it should get out of the meta. Um, there's still a lot of ways to play tier elements. <laughs> there's still so many ways to play tier elements without Kid Kalos, so I don't think it's an issue. Uh, I think that banning the card would help a lot, but I mean, like, people are still going to continue doing what, like, OCG is doing and just playing King of the Swamp to be able to make your Rook Kalos, right? Um... I mean, like, hitting and limiting Rook Kalos to one does nothing because everybody's only playing one. Uh, killing Kid Kalos does help a lot more because then people are going to be opening up, like, King of the Swamp and stuff like that. And people don't want to play King of the Swamp, if we're completely honest here. Um, it can also help because, like, you know, let's let's push them on to playing King of the Swamp, playing a couple of uh, polymerizations, of course. And then, like, it changes the consistency of the deck. It changes the way that they build it, of course. But those are just personal opinions, and I think that um, I think the Kakalo should get marked and it should get obliterated out of this <laughs> meta. Now, before I go too far on, um, I've seen Instant Fusion, Terraforming, and Harpy's Feather Duster being three cards that <laughs> that have been like part of like these engines that I talked about already, or I'm sorry, like cores that I've talked about already, archetypes. But I don't think these are cards that need to get hit. I used to be a really big advocate of uh, Harpy's Feather Duster being a card to get hit because I didn't own any. But now that I own them, you know, I, should, I don't think it should get hit. You know, I'm being biased here. Uh, but completely honest here, um, Terraforming is not a card that needs to get hit. Um, Instant Fusion, I think that it might need to get hit. But I wouldn't like for that card to get hit. I don't even play Instant Fusion. Um, I think it's cool. It definitely does change the game a lot. So, like, if you're playing against a, an opponent and they have nothing else and they top deck Instant Fusion, it's 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 a game ender. You're done. They pay a thousand life points. So what? And they continue playing. But I think that it's fine, dude. I think situations like that are cool and they happen. And it's just like it matters, you know? A lot of people do, do find it to be really toxic for that stuff to be around in the game. But I think it's fine. Um, the last card that I also wanted to talk about in this section here was uh, Toad. So totally awesome. I don't think it's a card that needs to get hit. It's at one. It's doing its job. Swap Frog into totally awesome. It's not that hard. But I mean, like, you get a little bit of recursion. You get a little bit of protection from Elf. It's fine. It's... It. I mean, like, there's just so many other ways that people are getting over it. I've been Lava Golem to death recently. So it's just like, if it happens, it happens. And you're not going to win them all. So, uh, yeah, those are cards that I think they should get hit. Now, there is one card um that isn't doing a lot of gameplay right now but every time i see it it's just the craziest freaking card i can experience out at locals and that is um runic fountain i hate that card it's crazy i have opponents go tip to fountain or whatever the combo is right and then they have tip and grave already and then they'll activate like blazing fire or whatever it's called to summon out the monster from the extra deck and then they'll go fountain to return the two draw two cards and then they just continue with their combo or do whatever they need to and it's just like and then fountain isn't once per turn it's once per oh well, it's once per turn but it's either player's turn too so they do it on their turn then they do it on your turn and then they do it on their turn again. 
and then your turn again. And then they just keep going, and it's a deck that will never deck out because the cards are going to get put back into the deck and then draw the same amount and put it back into the deck and then draw the same amount. And sometimes just keep drawing the same old cards and they're going to keep popping your uh, spells and traps and they're going to pop your monsters or they're going to protect their stuff from destruction. And it's just... Exactly. Um, I think Fountain should get hit to one. Now, to compensate all of that um, and field spells and whatnot, I think that... Um, Ancient Fairy Dragon is a card that can't come back. Uh, I think that Mystic Mind now being gone, cards like Metaverse came back to three, of course, but cards like Ancient Fairy Dragon can come back, and cards like Terraforming can even come back to more. Um, but I don't think it would. And um, I just think that Ancient Fairy Dragon is a card that can definitely help out players who play a lot of field spells. So why not bring back ancient fairy dragon right so we're going to kill their fountain and then we're going to give them an ancient fairy dragon and they're going to have one or two fountains and then they're going to have ancient fairy dragon which is going to help them get to it and that's it call it a day right <laughs> okay thunder dragon colossus orcus harp horror true draco masterpiece masterpiece true draco whatever right these are three cards that got hit in a ban list a couple of years back even diagram that we can talk about today that I think should come back, or some of them should come back. Harpoor, it's a card can, that, that could definitely come back to three, not even one, three, and it wouldn't be that impactful because we have 12 bestials now. We have now added three Baldrakes to our to our many, many bestials that we can hit darks in the graveyard. I don't think it's a problem. Um, yeah, it can be a quick play monster or like... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, it can just be, like, it can be something that you can, you know, quick effect. But I don't think that if you're playing against somebody who's experienced and a good duelist, it can, they, you know, I think it's good enough. I think that if it comes back, it can be played and people will have fun and Orcus lovers will be playing Orcus again. But that's it. Uh, I don't, I don't really see more from them. So I think that Harpoor can definitely come back to one or three honestly uh true draco masterpiece i feel like has been power crept already it's been long enough it's been a card that has been on the balance for too long and it's been power crept so much that even if it comes back where you would go oh it's unaffected by monsters and spells all right well this guy's about to drop a imperm and he's gonna wreck your masterpiece you know um it's just a thing like it, it it happens like i don't think masterpiece is honestly um that great of a card and you might as well throw three diagrams back in there while we're at it <laughs> um and then ending off with colossus colossus can stay banned for life we're going to continue on all right guys before we continue with today's video i wanted to make sure that you guys knew about my newest giveaway which is for this bls funko pop i am very excited to announce that at 2900 subscribers i will be giving away this pop there is a video already up on my channel. The link will be down in the description. Make sure you guys go comment. I want the BLS pop. I want the BLS in order for you guys to be able to enter this giveaway. Thank you. Now that I just mentioned all of the beast deals, I don't think beast deals should get hit. I don't think it's, I don't think there are cards that will ever get hit, personally speaking. I think Konami would also like to make as much money as possible off of them. Um, Lubellions, I literally just had a buddy give me a set of Bestials and I sold them within all a day. And it was really cool. I made him his money or whatever, but like these cards are good. And these cards aren't like super threatening or like they're not something that like is killing like every single deck. I think that what's killing every single deck are the Ishisu bring backs into the deck and stuff like that. Um, people can definitely play around beast deals if they are smart enough uh, or if they play it well enough. Um, so yeah, Magna High and stuff like that shouldn't get hit. Okay, while I'm in the topic of bringing cards back, um, I think Misk should be brought to three. <laughs> um, I hated, I hated with a passion, Fairy Tale Snow. So do not bring Fairy Tales now back. But cards like the Grass is Greener is a good card to come back. Um, I think it would be really dope to see stuff like that come back because it can definitely shape in the meta a lot more differently. Uh, I think it would make it a lot more interesting to to be able to 
play with 60 card decks again and stuff like that. Um, I like that kind of stuff. Now, Dryden't and the Prank Kids Link 1 are cards that I would like to see come back. I would like to see Prank Kids try go at it at the meta. I think it would be really interesting and really fun. Uh, I like the Link 1 a lot for Prank Kids because I also got a lot of advantage playing that in my um, Adam Emancipator deck a lot. So I like I like I like stuff like that. I think it's fun and I think it'd definitely be a good insert into our meta. I just think it'd be really interesting. Um plus I think prank kids I mean like they weren't the most fun deck to play against because a lot of prank kids players, let me be honest, are slow players. Shout out to a lot of the prank kids players that I know from locals. Um there's one off the top of my head that I know he's not a he's not a slow player, Devin. Shout out to Devin, my boy Devin. He's a judge. He judged at Nats. That guy's not a slow player. I love that guy. He's cool. But a lot of the other prank kids players that I know are slow players. Can't tell me otherwise. Now cards like Branded Fusion, with Branded getting so much support and so much love recently, I think that Branded Fusion should definitely be considered to be a card to get down to one. Uh, there's just so much other there's so many other ways to fusion with that deck now that one branded fusion probably wouldn't make the biggest of the difference for them uh, so try to restrict them some kind of way uh hypernova is going to be one of those that uh what is it uh sets i'm sorry that gives them just the craziest amount of support so many fusion monsters and whatnot right uh but that's just my personal opinion about it i think the branded fusion should definitely be hit to one um, just to be able to counterbalance everything else. Now, I think this is going to be the last part of the video. I wanted to talk about Kashatera. I didn't mention a single card in the deck getting hit because I think that every deck should have its little bit of time to shine. Uh, Adam Emancipators is probably the one deck that I never saw shine ever, and that was because of COVID, so we blame that for it. But like Kashatera, I don't think it should be like. I don't think it should be a deck that gets marked before it even comes out. Like, Hypernova is here right now. We're a couple of days away from it, and um, it should definitely have its time to shine. Uh, give it about a good format or two, and then kill it. Um, Fenrir is a really busted card. Unicorn is crazy good. But uh, Fenrir should definitely be one of those cards that gets limited to one or two later on. And two wouldn't even be an issue. I think it would be perfect at that spot. Now, the monster that keeps just locking out your opponent's zones should get hit later on and completely marked to zero because nobody wants to not play Yu-Gi-Oh. It's one of the reasons that like this is one of those cards that completely just shuts you out of like playing. You can't special summon, you can't normal summon, you can't do anything. And that's just um that's just really sucky. But I mean like stuff like this happens and if you get paired up against it, you can get paired up against it. And if you lose, you lose. If you win, congratulations my guy, you got your dub. But um I think that's about all my cards that I wanted to talk about today. I have a bunch of cards here that I was looking at. And just like I was looking at lists and lists and lists of people talking about certain cards. And if I talked about certain cards, it's because I saw them in some capacity getting hit in their ban list or not. And um, yeah, I think wrapping it up, you guys already know, I think Maxi should come back to three. <laughs> and I think it's a card that should definitely be released, especially with all the special summoning that's going on in this crazy, crazy Yu-Gi-Oh world. So, yeah, that's my personal opinion about all these cards. Let me know what you guys think down below. Yu-Gi-Oh! is definitely fun to a capacity, but it could get a lot more fun and it can get better. And um, I think releasing older archetype monsters, uh, boss monsters and stuff like that can definitely bring a lot more players back into the game, uh, into the love, into the game that we all love here. Um, I think Yu-Gi-Oh! is a lot of fun, but it can get better. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! is cancerous. Yu-Gi-Oh! is crazy. But it's fun. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. This is your boy Ed from Elite TV. You already know. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn that bell notification on. I'm trying to go live on Fridays. I know I haven't done the last two. But I've tried my best to do. Uh, I'm probably going to move it to Sundays. Because Sundays are more better days for me. <laughs> so thank you guys. And I'll see you guys. Hopefully I'll try to do a live this weekend. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Don't forget that I have a... Facebook group called Yu-Gi-Oh! Elite of Each. If you guys want to join us, all you got to do is just click the link down in the description. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to join our Elites of Each family. And I'll see you guys on the next video.